see this game is starting up here. And um, wow, Hopefully it looks it looks like uh, Backspace is just heading Warrior straight into this match. So you know, once again, maybe trying to take advantage of the fact that Penny has been playing a little bit more predictably than some of the opponents that uh, we've seen for some of these players so far. Mm -hmm. uh, we've seen Warrior absolutely crush Handlock so far in this tournament. Even when Handlock's getting to these really late stages where it's able to utilize Jaraxxus, it's not really able to save off the amount of burst that Warrior can apply later in the game. Yeah, we'll see how he is going to be able to handle that. And I'm just going to decide to armor up this turn. The Combobulator, that's not something we've seen actually get any use yet in this tournament. I've seen it you know, in hand once or twice, but I haven't actually seen it really played. It's something that seems like it really can have a lot of potential to get massive value. Like if you're trading in, say, you know, Alex Straws, it's down to one HP, then you can recombobulate uh, and get, you know, a new very powerful minion. But it's not always super effective. And I mean, how would you feel about uh, the use of it on something like, you know, an Ancient Watcher, even trying to get aggressive? Do you think that's even really worthwhile because it's not necessarily going to give you a very strong minion? I it is only a two cost minion. I think it's pretty rare. I think one of the things you're looking to do is not only heal up your giants, but more so convert your anti heal bot yep. into a more useful five drop later on in the game. Uh, yeah, very true. Yeah, right straight away, this is one of the reasons why Warrior has been so dominant is when it picks up stuff like Shield Slam and Execute, it can really swing these games. This has been coupled with an Acolyte of Pain, so he's not even really losing any value here. No. Uh, I mean, he gets a draw, gains yeah. a couple armor, and gets the Execute, so I mean, it's just, uh, these early minions are so powerful in combination with the Whirlwind. Yeah. This is a spot where it looks like Backspace, he's going to have the option to pick up more draws even, because uh, so this Despite, so Despite and Armor Smith likely to take out this Sludge Belcher, and then this Acolyte of Pain going to be picking up a second draw and still have a point of health left. Yeah, guaranteeing the three draws, I mean, pretty much guaranteeing. No one's going to want to silence a 1-1 one, one Acolyte. Yeah, so I mean, it's just tough. It's so painful. He could, even he could pick that third draw up right now if he wanted to. He could replace this Death Spite uh, and sweep out this Ooze. I don't think it's a play yeah, he's necessarily he, he wants to, to hold make. On to it. Yeah, but just this Acolyte alone has already presented such a big problem because Penny's been life tapping every turn of the game, but Backspace has drawn two extra cards and he's about to pick up a third. He's right there with him in terms of the number of cards he's had. Yeah, no kidding, but he is having to pay a price for that. I mean, we're looking at the life totals of 23 versus basically 36, so, you know, that is the price that the World Cast had to play. He's actually just going to get Sun Fury on the board, so he just wants to develop and move forward from here. Uh, wow, oh, wow, a second acolyte. acolyte gets picked up. This is going to be so many cards for backspace. Do you I think there's any chance of just dropping the Dr. Boom, though, because he already has a lot of cards? I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't mind actually just taking out the 4-5 the with your axe and then dropping the Dr. Boom. I don't have a problem with that either, but, you know, what trade-off are you trying to make? Your hand is pretty short on direct removal spells right True. now. So it just it depends on what stance he wants to take. If he wants to favor development, I think that something like Dr. Boom is definitely a play he can consider. Yeah. But at the same time, Gore Howl is... A really, really tough card to get the ball rolling, and this may be one of those turns where he feels safe doing so. But you, you know, there's a chance that he's just going to favor drawing extra cards, which I can't blame him for. No, I mean, I like. Uh, there's a lot of good plays here. I think either of them is is, is very good. Yep, so you're going to see. I mean, this he can even shield block and draw three cards this yep. time. You're going to see him. He gets an extra damage here out of this acolyte of pain before attacking. Really smart stuff here. But now Penny. I mean, he's basically lost both of his ancient watchers. Uh, at this point, they're not going to be able to get silence, utilized for silence or anything like that. Backspace still at a very healthy life total. He's drawn a ton of cards. Again, he's still kind of lacking in removal, though, so if Penny's going to get something rolling, now is the turn he's going to look to do it, but he doesn't have any threats in his hand. No, unfortunately for him, he doesn't. I mean, it's, it's a handful of spells. He has two Shadow Flames, two Siphon Souls, Hellfire, Dark Bomb. Uh, I mean, the Lothep is going to be the play here, but it yeah, just has not really drawn into a lot of those threats and yep. doesn't want to go up another triple draw here, so he is going to be forced to take that out. It's a tough turn for back. No direct answer to this uh, to this Lothep this turn, so he's going to have to I mean, take I some damage here. I wouldn't mind the Shield Bane. I don't mind the Shield Bane either. I don't mind Dr. Boom. I don't mind Sylvanas. Yep. I don't mind Sludge Belcher. All these plays, again, it's just... This story, the story of this game looks like it's adding up very quickly to be that Backspace has just had so many good turns to navigate through, yeah. and that Penny, uh, you know, really just kind of a reactive hand. I mean, one of the one of the tells of a great hand is is when there's like three, four <laughs> legitimate yeah. options. I mean, in every turn, it's it's not like you know struggling to find the one good option. It's like, oh, this is nice. This is nice. Yeah. <laughs> this, Th is nice. this is sort of the reflection you see when Warrior gets the ball rolling early. Yeah. Just so many good plays. This is what makes it so powerful. And the fact that he drew five cards from two acolytes. That's a. I mean, that's another way to get a lot of options <laughs> going. I mean, this 
this hand would be four or five cards had these acolytes not gotten so many card draws out of it. I, I, I gotta favor Dr. Boom in a spot like this. Yeah, I like it's just it. so much pressure being added. Still no action for Penny outside of that first mountain giant that he had, which got handled right away. Again, just a handful of reactive yeah. spells. I don't think he feels comfortable using a siphon life this early because he's going to face down so many more potential minions. Mm -hmm. I mean, he could just trade in his minions if he decides to do so, but uh, at the same time, I mean, uh, it's kind of tough. I mean, he could also just go face and shadow flame one up uh, after trading in the 2 1. There's, there's, there, there are some different options here. He has double shadow flame as well, so I mean, I wouldn't mind that if he wants to deal with that. That would clear the board. You know, the 2 1 into the 7 7, Lothab goes face and then shadow flame it. Yeah, I think that he's got to look to use his cards that are not as powerful yeah, before so he I chooses to use his, his better answers. And I think that's probably going to yeah, be a play exactly here. That's exactly what he's going to do. Yeah. Maybe he'll life tap first, but, you know, maybe he's just going to develop the anti heal bot if he takes too much damage here. He's down to 16, so, uh, you know, not terribly worried about his life total, but this also helps set up the Recombobulator next turn. Yeah, which, it, which we box. actually haven't seen played one time yet this tournament, so we'll see you know, what kind of value he's going to be able to get yeah. from that. Well, it's, unfortunately, it's not going to get much here, because this Fiery War yeah. is going to take it out straight away. Baxley's actually draws Faceless Manipulator, and this is a card that we have not seen all tournaments so far. No. A card that has been cut from a lot of these lists, too. I wonder exactly what his game plan with that is. Well, I mean, the thing is, you know, you can if you can steal like a taunted up molten giant or something like that. That's that's massive. And I mean, I feel like a lot of these tech cards almost are guaranteed to get good value when you're fighting against a handlock. I mean, you know, when you look at a lot of the kind of tech cards that people people have in there, like you know, say a faceless manipulator, they're almost always going to get good value because those big minions are going to come down. You know, black knight almost always going to get good value against a warlock. Big game hunter. You know, a lot of these tech cards really do shine against against a warlock. So. I feel like it's pretty darn nice. This Shield Maiden really threatens a shield block right here, too, so even if Penny draws something, he's got to be afraid that it could just yeah. be dealt with straight away. Yeah, I mean, the Mountain Giant, I mean, especially with how many cards he's drawn, although he doesn't have the Shield Slam, if I'm sitting against this, I'm thinking, yeah, Oh, yeah, it's de sure. you're definitely thinking about Shield Slam at this point, especially when they developed the Shield Maiden into such a high armor count, so Life Tap, I think, certainly the play that he's going to look for here. I think he's got to drop the Mountain Giant anyway, but I, I don't think he's very comfortable about this because no. even if he doesn't have Shield Slam, this can just be dealt with straight away with by the Shield Maiden. Yep. Oh, oh he and he draws try. the Shield oh, Slam. Man. So now he has an opportunity, if he wants to, to face Faceless. his Manipulator, this like Giant, that. and Shield Slam. He could play Sylvanas and Shield Slam. He could sl just, again, it, he has so many legitimate lines of play here. Uh, you know, and I, I think you just face it and you shield slam. No reason to, to play the Solanus yet. He doesn't need any more additional threats, I don't think. So uh, I like this a lot. You can just simply armor up after this. And, I mean, he's looking so good right now. His opponent down to 17 HP, facing down, you know, the potential of 16 damage plus whatever else he has, you know, he draws next turn. Yeah, I mean, he could he could attack with this weapon and put his opponent in, you know, this could in threaten lethal, lethal range, next yeah. turn. But he doesn't even have to attack. So here's the thing. When he doesn't attack here... Pity's still got to be worried about lethal because something like Gromash, something like Gorhal, maybe even Ragnaros by itself, he's got to answer this giant straight away, but this is, because Backspace has such a presence, it's going to continue to yield him initiative and he can leverage this position to make sure he stays wow, ahead. He's actually got to use bomb. two Ouch. dark bombs. Ugh, and I mean, that's, it's such a, I mean, he has to do it, but it's a brutal turn for him. He's putting himself away from Molten Giant, which is the only real threat in his hand right now. His opponent up to 33, uh, you know, total life. It's, it's looking rough. I imagine he's going to develop... I wouldn't mind the Harrison this turn. I don't actually. mind the Harrison, but you know, you got to be thinking about Jaraxxus too. Yep. With how much he's been able to deal with True. and how strong his hand is, maybe Jaraxxus is like the only way he's actually even going to lose this game. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, in that case, I think I think Shieldman uh, is pretty legitimate. Sludge Belts is fine. There's a lot of options you could... You can shield block, see if you get anything better, and then simply Sludge Belts or armor up you want it, you know, put yourself at a massive armor total, there's no harm yeah. <laughs> in getting more armor. Let's see what he does. So he, he's going to favor just making sure he has an even stronger yep. hand available, it looks like. Yeah, I like this. Uh, dig for some options. I mean, that's not going to change anything, so it will just, in fact, be the shield main as opposed to the armor up. I mean, uh, I feel like I feel like such ultra armor up is fine. This is fine. They're, I think, I think that he wants to get the shield main out of his hand simply for mana constraint reasons. Yeah. If he wants to play two five drops later, he has that available, mm -hmm. so just kind of trying to utilize his mana better. Uh, in future turns rather than utilizing him better on this well, turn. There is the double Molten Giant now. Another anti kill bot going to come down. It's going to be the Recombobulator as well, I'm guessing. I mean, I don't think wow, he's, he's going to choose no. to just leave it alone. So okay. this is going to get picked off by the second charge of Fiery War Axe here. Another Execute gets drawn. Gosh, Backspace has so many options available to him. 
again, I think he's going to develop his Gorehal just for future mana considerations. No, he's going to go with Sludge Belcher instead, so this is going to mean armor. He, it, the fact that he's held on to Harrison one turn means he's likely to hold on to Harrison until Jaraxxus makes an appearance, so no surprise to see that. And Penny, he's too far away from being able to play Molten Giants. He's going to continue to life tap. There's oh, the there Jaraxxus. Jaraxxus. So it could really come into play. Both of these players only have eight cards left in their deck, too, so Harrison might actually be overdrawing in a scenario mm -hmm. like this, but this is going to be a really strong Gore Howl turn. Oh, BGH He's is a nice draw as well, and we just have so hunter. many answers. He has this BGH, uh, even if there's a double molten giant turn, he has BGH plus an execute. Uh, this is Gore Howl. He has so many ways to deal with this right now. Another question here is, which one of these minions does he want to keep a little bit healthier? Yeah. Well, I guess there's always the potential of, of just keeping the Gore Howl you know, keeping the Gorehal charge to try to keep that for a bit of an execute on, yep. on I, ima I imagine if he's developing I, I, I would assume he's going to use it. He's yeah. just got so much life, it makes no, yep. makes no reason not well, to pay Yeah, him. yeah, I wasn't really thinking about it for that for that reason. I was, uh, yeah, I like keeping the Shield Maiden healthier here. Not that he's anticipating Soulfire, but it, it certainly is not an impossibility. Mm -hmm. Or something like uh, an Ancient Water sh Watcher Shadow Flame. Yep. Twilight Drake Shadow Flame too. Yep. Just any any of the four point Shadow Flames. Yep. Or even really like Hellfire Immortal Oil. If, if he wants to go face here. Yeah, he's thinking about he's thinking about how much Giants are actually going to affect what's going on, and I think with a hand like his. I think he can go face at this point. Yeah, but you know, again, your opponent's going to have seven cards left in their deck, and they could potentially go to six. There's a really high chance they have two Molten Giants at this point, but he's going to favor the damage instead. So this is threatening lethal. Uh, on Penny's side of the board, so he's definitely going to be going for at least one Molten Giant. But the question here is, does he feel like he needs to taunt these? Is he going to Shadow Flame? But I don't know if he's really got the tools to, to keep fighting through these kinds of board positions. Eventually, he's just going to have lost all of his legitimate threats. Yeah. And I mean, the Shadow Flame is, is still pretty scary. If you only drop one in Shadow Flame, I mean, you, you need to have taunts down because you're sitting at 11 HP. There's there's six damage from the weapon. You have to be thinking about Gromash. I mean, there's a lot of ways you could die at that HP. Yep. Even, I mean, he's got to be considering consider both his anti kill bots are gone. Yeah, he's, he's got to be thinking about you know how much is it worth to life tap at this point too. Yeah, yeah and if you're life tapping, Penny is just for? throwing out a well played right away. I think he is starting to see that he's just been like, every single stage of the game has been leveraged so heavily by backspace. He's got to just take all of these really aggressive stances. What's going on here? He's actually going to use a second defender of Argus just to make sure that he's oh, saved off lethal. Much. Wait, does wow. he does he have it with okay? No. He could even just brawl this turn. Well, it'd be pretty reasonable. I think you can take out that three four with your with your shield main and then just brawl. Yeah, actually, I think brawl's very good. He doesn't have really to do that turn. though, obviously. He are you going to get a better brawl than potentially? I don't think so. Twenty two points of damage though. No. And the thing is, if a mountain giant wins a brawl, you just beat big Yeah, he, he has a big you actually has a follow up. actually like like to win his mind. <laughs> yeah. And it, yeah. He's going to get and a one thing is slime out of it no matter if what, it is, what the if outcome. If his shield maiden wins, he has lethal. Oh, he could even just brawl first, yeah. Yeah, you brawl first. And uh, the thing is, if your shield maiden wins, um, you actually have lethal with Gorehal plus your shield maiden. I got to believe that brawl is the best play here. Yeah, I think so too. Because no matter what wins, you're in a good position. If one of your minions wins, you're super happy. Uh, actually, you know, I, I think, yeah, I mean, it's it's going to be fine. Yeah, but he's going to continue to pay life instead. I mean, no fear in paying it here for backspace. No. He's just at such a healthy amount of life that just, it, is there a reason to even be concerned with anything? No, I don't, I don't think there is. But at the same time, I, I think the other play may have been, you know, slightly better, but it, it doesn't really matter uh, at this point. I mean, he has Gromash in, in, in hand as well. So it's, there's, you know, he has this game won basically 10 different ways. And I think that is pretty much going to be it. He doesn't I mean, have a way to activate Gromash yet. You no, know, he doesn't. He can Earth and Ring and, and Shadow Flame that up, and that is going to clear it out. But, I mean, I just am really failing to see yep. how, how Penny comes back and wins this game. You know, it's not it's not actually lethal or anything just yet, but, but still. Except for Ragnaros. Yeah. He could pressure his opponent into a spot where whether or not Ragnaros hits his face or hits the Recombobulator, he's happy about it. He'd have to sacrifice his Gorehal to do it, so he's going to continue to play this game slow. He's already seen both Molten Giants. There's not many threats left for Penny, and this Ragnaros is going to drop him down to 5 HP. Uh, he's got a Siphon Soul in hand, but how does he actually win the game after this? 
Oh well, yeah, and I mean the he thing picks is up the a weapon. big game hunter. Oh wow. Maybe this is enough to get the ball rolling, but he's still facing down lethal. How he's much the weapon is still four damage, is it yeah, not? So yeah, he's so it's still a lethal. He's still and got the a siphon soul. is there as well. He would have to siphon soul. Was it even with that? He's, yeah. He's still. He's that's, still dead. He's still dead with Gromosh, even without the enrage. So that is going to be it. The Gromosh going to come down. Backspace going to take game number one here over Penny. Very well played. Just in complete control the whole way through. This is the exact opposite of the story we saw when Dart was playing the Warrior Control. Yep. He just, you know, maybe it's a it's a matchup thing, but Dart could... In there. We see the wild growth in hand for Penny. What else is he going to pick up? We'll have to wait to see what's going to get mulliganed. Shield Slam are a really key card in this matchup. Yeah. I think, uh, you know, I used to mulligan it a lot, but I find that when I'm winning a lot of games versus Druid, it's because I get a good Shield Block Shield Slam turn out of it. Yeah, very true. Definitely not going to hold on to the Brawl. I guess he, he may just be thinking, do I want to keep the Acolyte? Do I want to keep the Shield Slam? Do you think there's any chance of him? Okay, he's gonna he's actually gonna mulligan the fiery war axe, which I think makes sense because there's not a lot of you know low HP minions against the druid, yeah, so you don't I've really need that. Be before there was stuff like Harvest Golem, and sometimes you see Sun Fury Protector. Ooh. So if you know that your opponents are playing minions like that, fiery war axe I think can be justified as a key. Yeah. But for now, I think I, he just wants to be digging to find these important combos that he has. Pretty and awful hand for there. Penny. Uh, I, I mean, I think it's a, it's a fine hand. I mean, big game hunter is not the best threat in the world, but it still is a four power minion. Uh, yeah. There's not a lot of easy access kills to that, and this hand's going to pick up a lot of steam as you go along, because like you said, there's a lot of five drops in here, and when you have wild growth and when you have innervate, you can look for some really explosive turns. Yep, we'll see uh, what he's going to be able to get done. What is going to be the draw? Highlighted Shredder really does help to, to strengthen up this yep. hand. I mean, you know, if he had a, d a dead turn this turn, that would have looked pretty weak, but now being able to have the Highlighted Shredder into wow, a Druidic Claw, execute into is such another. an important draw right now, I think, too. Yeah really is. I mean, because next turn, if you play if you play something into this, you know, the death rattle is going to activate the execute on the other minion. <laughs> He's playing Sun Fury Protector after all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, wow, I, we can I like innervate out Dr. Boom too. I actually really like this that is gonna, This could come back to bite him, though, because if you look at this hand, yeah. it's already executing here, so this of is... Of course. But, but, I mean, given what Penny knows, I can't blame yeah, him. Yeah, no, this. I mean, I would I would go for the Dr. Boom here, too. I mean, yep. you, got, you are kind of forcing your opponent to have execute in this spot, but not only does he have execute, but he has Accolade of Pain. Sorry oh, that happened. Man. Backspace knows that this was one of the worst possible scenarios that Penny could get in. And if these Boom Bots... And look, let's say one of these Boom Bots hits the Accolade for one. They both go for face. Four. They both oh my deal God. four and, and look damage. He's already at 16 HP, man. If I'm Penny, I'm just think I'm charging face. I think he's gonna do it. I mean, gosh, what else are you gonna yeah. do? I mean, that's just so much damage you dealt with Doctor Boom. Already at 12 HP, and I mean, yeah, he had a great answer, but geez, those Doctor Boom rolls really showing the strength of that card. Faces manipulator, not a bad answer here too. It's no. gonna keep him from taking so much damage. Yeah, he, he just can't afford to actually death spite that right now. You know, yeah. we talked about it. you can't afford to just take eight damage from from that. Uh, Card. Hmm. Alright, looks well, pretty nice here because it's gonna basically guarantee he can't answer it with a spell. So I mean the thing is if he has to pay that life total to actually to answer this with a weapon, he's in a rough spot. You know, I think I I gotta think that's what he's Jeez. gonna end up doing though. He's gotta He can't gosh, afford not it's to just, it's just too much life. I mean maybe he's just gonna try to absorb the damage with Shield Maiden and then hope to use the Shield Maiden on it, but that's effectively gonna be the same thing that the Death Spite was. Yeah. Rough. I mean, it could very well be that shield main just to, to develop the board, but I mean, you know, he'll, he'll be, you know, the armor will all get shredded. He'll be back to. Uh, I got a favorite death bite here, and the reason is because he's got shield slam in his hand. Yeah, yeah you need to have a value turn when you're in this, this kind of yeah. a, a position. See what he draws. He's see what he draws. Yeah. That's that's yeah, not a bad one. That, that makes it even yeah. more clear to he's me. He's going to need every single point of life he can get, but uh, you know, at this point, you, you got to think that maybe shield maiden is not a bad one either, but. You might as well pay life right now while you can and, and hope to get it rolling afterwards, but he's down to just eight, and Penny is not hes not out of threats yet, and he's still got a card draw every single turn. Innervate has got Oof. to be one of the worst draws in his deck of the yeah, moment. Yeah, he was really hoping for uh, for something. He's not going to develop this room. big like game. If he got another piloted shredder or something there, it could have spelled the end of the game. You know, i got to think that, that maybe playing a big game hunter would have been a good choice here. Mm. And backspace, you know, he's got to be worried about combo next turn, but he's got a potential to take this, this, uh, this shade out here with Doctor Boom too. He's just going to go with Shield Maiden. I certainly can't blame him for that. No, he, he's just so nervous about his life total right now. 
and he picks up a Another second shade, shade really of this is not what he wanted. I mean, Penny had a great start, but it's really starting to kind of uh, peter think, out here. I don't know. I think the shades are actually pretty good in this position. Mm. You know, you, they're going to be growing every turn. This is putting you just straight up a clock on your opponent. I think he draws with the Wrath here. I actually wouldn't mind him drawing with the Wrath I would, there. I wouldn't either. But I, I think that would have been actually pretty smart because... I mean, your opponent's so low on life. If you drew it to, like, a Savage Roar even next turn, even with just the Shades, you could potentially end the game. Well, not now. Backspace picks up a Brawl, oh and... Oh, my God. But he knew that combo wasn't there last turn. Is yep. he afraid of it this turn? I gotta think he's not, but it's, it's gonna be on his mind for the rest of the game, because it's only a matter of time. He's going until for the Penny Brawl. Until Penny gets a draw, he's gonna go for the Brawl. If he wins this, this could just be game over right here, right now. Let's see. Oh, and he does win it. Oh, oh my, God. my gosh. That is... An insane brawl that happened, but is this just payback for the boom bots dealing eight points of damage? Penny is basically out of gas at this point. He needs something big off of this raft to keep things going. Well, he gets he gets one part of the There's combo. There's one part but of the combo, but but backspace is just he's at such a high life total right now. If it's his just, shade survived that, I mean. The, the difference in, in board position because of that is just ridiculous because, I mean, imagine his shade was still growing. I mean, he, he would be at a 4-4 four, four shade, and then next turn, if the combo was drawn into, it would actually just be game. Sylvanas gets picked up. He can Sylvanas Shield Slam to steal a threat, but Dr. Boom is going to come down, and the pressure now is on Penny. Penny needs to find a way to deal lethal damage, but with Backspace getting two extra health a turn, now the clock is back on him. This Wild Growth needs to draw something really important here. Well, second force, force of nature. Of nature. Uh, I mean, I gotta believe it's just gonna be big game hunter, but I wouldn't have actually minded him just taking out one of the bo the boom bots with hero power first. I think that actually would have been uh, kind of nice. But I mean, I guess he just feels like he has to just go face everything. Such a tough position to be in. Even Ragnaros gets picked up. Backspace just gonna shield slam. I gotta believe this means that that yeah, I was gonna say Sylvanas has just gotta come out if you're gonna shield slam here. Maybe it's going to be Ragnaros, though. Maybe he feels like he wants to try to pressure for the win. I mean, Gromash wouldn't have been bad either, but I guess he really just wants to keep these Boombots alive. Development has been absolutely stunted for Penny, and with an Innervate in his hand, he's got access to 15 damage if he draws Savage Roar, but he's got to use his Force of Nature just to clear up the board. Is he just going for face? Wow. Penny is going all in. He's relying on Savage Roar. I think it's actually the right choice. For his draw. I mean, I gotta believe it is. Look at this board position. You're not gonna recover it from this state. He's put himself in a position where he's working and hoping that a two outer can get him out of this yeah. spot. And backspace, this is the time for him to apply maximum pressure and try to end the game next turn. It's all gonna come down to one draw for Penny to see if he can pick up lethal or not. Uh, we've talked about this, you know, putting yourself in a position to win, you know, and, and this is it for P for Penny. He realizes there's no way to recover, and even though it is a one-out win, he's got to go for it. We'll see if it works out here for him. Uh, you know, this is it. He has Penny to draw Penny needs Savage here. Roar and Savage Roar so only, and he doesn't pick it up, and I believe that's going to be game. There is so much damage available for Backspace, and no answer he in Penny's hand. He had the activation with Gromash. I mean, that is going to be it. Wow, Penny going to drop two games to zero versus Backspace now, and he's left with Warrior Control to try to pick up three wins in a row. But we've seen Backspace already go 2-0 with it. Is this the start of something maybe that... I mean, this is the miracle start that Penny's going to need to pick things back up. i got to believe he went for the right play. There, again, like you said, there was just no way he was going to recover the board. Just such... Really, just so many dead draws in, yeah. in the middle there for him. And even just with the shade, he had a potential to take this game. But uh, either way, this is going to be it. And let's find out. He may try to end it off with a boom bots. And uh, so potentially he could. He steals his opponent. Minion just insult to injury at this point. Boom bots not going to get it done. But he could even just pass the turn. He doesn't even need to attack with Gromosh. Well, he is. And that's going to finish it off. Penny down two games now here against Backspace. He's going to need to win three straight. We've seen it happen a couple times in the tournament already. But... Oh, man, I don't know. As soon as he does give us the invite, we will have that for you. But right now, we can see Penny, you know, working uh, on those mulligans. And uh, the game just now starting up. So we will just go in and we will be watching simply uh, from Penny's side until we can get that invite from Backspice uh, to be able to hop on into the game. A really heavy hand here. 
the penny right away too. He's got Barry War Axe, which is really important. He's got Death Spite, which is really important. But he's also got a second copy of Death Spite, and he doesn't have something like an Acolyte in his hand. So, you know, not a lot of development going on, but a lot of cards to work with. Yep. And we just see the Armor Smith coming down. Uh, perhaps an Acolyte to follow it up. Let's see what the play is going to be. But I mean, the Taskmaster is there to answer uh, that Armor Smith right now. Oh, we got removed from spectating the game. I think that has to be a, a mistake, unfortunately. Yeah, a little bit of a technical issue that we're that we're rolling with here. We're going to try to get this spectator feed back up as soon as we can. But um, yeah, yeah. So it's do you know this is just something that you roll with sometimes with technology <laughs> is it doesn't work the way you want it to. So you, you got to make do with what you have. This is the platform that we <laughs> choose to use. Oh, uh, we are uh, back in, in uh, on Penny's side, yeah, so, so we can we, we can hop back into the game here, but. Yeah, I think that must have just been a mistake. You probably thought someone who wasn't supposed to be watching was watching and didn't really recognize the account name or something like that. But anyway, we are back into the game. We still have not been invited by Backspace. And Penny kicked us out, so times are tough, but we're back in the game. <laughs> and, um, you know, uh, we do see that, obviously, that Taskmaster did come down and remove the armor smith and Bouncing Blade uh, as a card. And I forgot that Penny was actually running that. And it could be, could be pretty powerful in some situations in this matchup. And we are now finally getting back in here with the feed uh, from Backspace, so we are going to have you know both sides of uh, of the game for you guys. Very sure. Yeah, Penny's deck actually looks like it's really well built for this mirror. Uh, Ooh, Harrison. We know he's got Iron Juggernaut, and he's also got Bouncing Blades too, which is really good at clearing out threats. Harrison's going to pick up some really strong value here, uh, but again, just a lot of strong answers from Penny, and I think scaling into this late game, you know, looking at the way his deck's built, I got I got to favor him outright from deck mm -hmm. building. No, I would agree. I think that Bouncing Blade is a very powerful card in this matchup, and it's going to be another Death Bite develop. Uh, the X Cube going to come down as well to get rid of that Harrison. Wow, that is... I'm really surprised he didn't choose to use his life total in a spot like that. Yeah, I would agree. I mean, I feel like there's just so many late-game threats that could be so punishing, uh, and, and having the X Cube available for him is, is something that's almost necessary, but you know, perhaps he was sitting with the big-game hunter there, he's feeling like maybe he can like, bait him into something. I'm not sure. Yeah, maybe he's trying to send the signal of desperation so he can get more value out of his big game hunter earlier. Yeah. Shield slam a pretty dead draw at the moment because he doesn't have any armor. You know, had he used his death bite too, this death bite would actually take out this sludge belcher this turn as well. Very true. I am a little bit surprised that he chose to use execute, but he's reluctant to use bouncing blades in a position like this. I think he really is trying to get some big value with Bouncing Blades. He probably knows that that's, it, it's a card that his opponent isn't going to have, you know, uh, and trying to use that to his advantage. I mean, if you can take out, like, a Ragnaros or something like that, yep. you know, it could be massive. But at the same time, sometimes Bouncing Blade is, is, is a card that's hard to play. I mean, if your opponent has an Acolyte of Pain down, for example, uh, alongside that big threat, you can really be hurting yourself by playing it. Yeah. Certainly can, and... Uh a little bit of a tough turn for backspace. Kind of awkward that you have a one health sludge butcher out while you have a one charge death spite <laughs> on the board. Yeah. A little bit rough. Wow, he's actually just going to develop Sylvana straight away. There's not really a, a great way in, in Penny's hand to deal with this either. Yeah, it really isn't. And I mean, Silence is being cut from the deck, is something that we talked about. Um, because it's really kind of hard to fit it in there. And, I mean, the fact of the matter is, it's like, it has given Sylvanas so much more value than you would normally see. Yeah. And, I mean, we've seen, uh, like, games just, Faramir, single-handedly, two games were one off of the Sylvanas. I mean, the Sylvanas was just insane in that series for him. And it's something that we haven't seen be as crazy uh, in previous uh, previous turns. Bouncing play is going to get some pretty nice value here to be able to clean that up. You know, nothing insane, but still, it's definitely something he wanted to get rid of, and, yep. so and without it there, you know, pretty pretty uh, worthwhile card. Sort of a big talk of this game is that Penny has had to use so many cards to deal with just, you know, the mid-range size minions that maybe he's not going to have the removal to shore this up, and big Backspace picks up a second Acolyte of Pain, oh, and there wow. is so much value available Ouch. for him. He he's has just begun... so many cards ahead. Gosh, he has begun to just choke out every single piece of... of anything that's hit the board here from Penny, it's just, look at the hand sizes here. I mean, he could even Cruel Taskmaster pick up another card. He can just Fiery War Axe. He can armor up. Th this seems to be very consistent with Backspace throughout the course of his Warrior games. He's just had so many options available yeah. to him. 
And I mean, the fact of the matter is, uh, like looking at Penny's hand, I'm sure that he was hoping that there wasn't really anything that was going to come down. He could have or, or, or one big threat and perhaps developed the Ragnaros because really it was his only hope uh, of having a good turn next turn, you know, based on what he already had, was was to try to get some value out of the Ragnaros. But there's no chance that he can develop it into this board. And Gosh. I mean, Dr. Boom can come out here, but once again, you can trade both of those into the, into yeah. the one cost minions and you're going to guarantee yourself three draws on both. I mean, and he gets oh a whirlwind. God. Are does the world, does you the world even really matter in this point? Uh, I mean, I don't think he wants to draw this many cards. No, I mean, wow. <laughs> Must be a hard life when your yeah. hands full. <laughs> uh, too many cards. Sorry. <laughs> well, uh, I mean, it's definitely going to be an execute on the Doctor Boom. I would have to imagine. He could actually just Alex draws it here. I mean, I guess he, you know you can't. You yeah, know, I think he, he wants, to, he wants to, to clear up this board for sure. Execute for sure. Yeah. And this looks to me like it's gonna be whirlwind, but I can't guarantee. I mean, he may just attack into one of these boom bots and just kind of ignore the other one. That's exactly what he's gonna do. Go straight to the acolyte. And gosh, just look at how many cards wow, he's available Gromash. to him. Is he just gonna grow wash? I actually think it's. Away? it's I mean, I don't think it's a bad play because the fact of the matter is, it's like. Look at the amount of cards in your opponent's hand. You know, what is he going to do about it? And Shield Maiden is, is a more conservative play. Totally fine. Uh, I, but I feel I, like I, he's got to be trolling everyone with that one. I just, I mean, you have a Shield Maiden available. You yeah. can have Fiery War, actually. Have armor. Like, why on earth would you <laughs> use such a powerful card in a situation like this? You know, if your opponent does have an answer to it, it's yeah. not going to be too good. Yeah, we talked be, about Slam uh, being in some of the Warrior decks, too. And I actually like this include right now because there's so many Divine Shields being used. Mm -hmm. And yes, the fact that he's using stuff draw. like right, and the fact that he's using stuff like bouncing blades, and uh, like mm. in this deck, you, you just need a little bit of extra gas sometimes. Alex Straza gonna come out. I mean, the fact Alex Straza plus he has uh, the Taskmaster Gromosh, it's just like I you've geez. seen a lot you've seen a lot of answers so far. It's just you know Penny's able to answer all this stuff, but I think this is just a matter of backspace having all the cards available to deal with this board position. Yeah. But you know, you never know. We've seen crazier comebacks than this, and if he can keep maintaining, continuing to answer these uh, these cards, then you know something could be pretty devastating. But the explosive sheep is going to be very nice here. We're going to clear this out. We haven't seen Harrison Jones no. from Penny's side of the board, so I imagine that Gorehouse got to stay in hand for the time being. This just looks like a death spite or a shield maiden to me. Yeah, I wouldn't mind the shield maiden whatsoever. Yep. He's still got shield block in his hand, so he's not really worried about his and armor shield shred. Slam. And the shield slam. I mean, you know, the worst that it could get shredded is, is eight points. Uh, pressure back on Penny. He's going to choose to forego the Ragnaros for another turn. Well, gets a shield slam to deal with this, but again, he doesn't have a point of development this turn, so he yields initiative once again to backspace. And just for that reason, I would have used. preferred the Ragnaros. Yeah, I think, I think Ragnaros just might have been a risk you had to take at this point, even though you're staring down so many cards. He's going to go for 12 points of damage straight away, and this is dire straits for Penny now. This armor's yeah, right going to now, get I mean, the only answer so he has is a Ragnaros, which is the one in three shot, and we'll see if he can draw anything else, and no. So, I mean, it basically has to be, I mean, he can I mean, slam he can first. Too. You yeah. can slam, you can make it, you, oh, wow. I actually think he should have maybe, oof. What do you think about that? I, I feel like he should have slammed the Taskmaster. Yeah, I definitely should have slammed the Taskmaster here, I think, too. But this Ragnaros get so important. Two of these targets are bad. He picks oh up the Gromish with a Ragnaros hit. But how much of oh, a difference BGH off the top, is though. it actually? I mean, he still had two shield slams. He had yeah. shield block. He's got all the weapons available to him. But yeah, I, that was kind of silly. I think he should have increased his chances. I mean, I guess he was praying for an Execute or something like that, try to get the card yeah, draw. I, think but so. I, I mean, that's, but he's used so much of it already. Yeah. Backspace is just going to continue to apply pressure to his opponent's board position. Fiery War Axe, I mean, I think Penny's happy to Harrison Jones yeah, at this no point kidding. just he because needs he needs draw. something rolling. But it's already contested by Big Game Hunter. Backspace has a stacked hand, and he's got 17 armor to go with it. Well, no way to activate Gromash. Harrison, you know, Harrison may draw him into some sort of answer for this. Um, I'm sure that's what he's hoping for. Oh, Oof. gosh, that's a brutal one to draw right now. Yeah, not what he was looking for. Do you think maybe he should hold on to that armor smith for potentially an extra... For a brawl. Yeah, the extra yeah. just percentages on the brawl. I think it's definitely something he could do. Ooh, man, Ragdros uh, with the potential to actually face his manipulator that next turn is kind of just saw Harrison Jones, too, so this is a turn where he's got to feel comfortable so developing good, Gorhal, yeah. too. Yeah. I mean, I, I feel like it's it's gotta be. Wow. I'm he's gonna, I mean, this means he's gonna Ragnaros. He's yeah. just gonna apply maximum okay, wow. pressure. 
I can't blame him for this either. Penny down to the felt. He's got a brawl left. He's got Kramich. He's got Alex Straza, but he's on the ropes. He doesn't have much life. This brawl has got to be so important. I got to imagine you're playing the Acolyte to go with this. You just you want every single percentage point you can get right now. He needs to have a good brawl here. Uh, I mean, it's, it's pretty much, he has to actually have the Taskmaster or his Acolyte win, or he dies to Gore Owl, I do believe. So, oh, so Taskmaster wow. actually can keep him alive now. So he, he, there's still nine points of damage, but that was the only one of two chances that he had to actually survive. Dr. Boom gets drawn, and I gotta believe that this is gonna seal the yeah. deal. I mean, there's just no answers. He can put himself back up to 15, but, he's a second but I mean, the right fact of the matter is, is yeah. Gorhal will end it, even if he puts himself back to 15, and that's going to be the play. He's going to put himself back to 15, guaranteed, and that's going to be the game here. It's going to be a 3-0 sweep for Backspace. He is punching his ticket to the Grand Finals. The Gorhal is going to come down. That is going to be that. Penny falls in three straight, had a good run in the tournament, but he is going to be heading to that third place match, and there it is. There's the concede. Very well played series here from Backspace, and we have had a lot of 3-0s in this tournament. It's just been, uh, it feels like these players get on a roll, and they just are crushing. And I mean, Backspace is on a huge roll, but he's going to have to go up against Faramir in the Grand Finals.